Good evening, everyone. We're in the second part of our class. We're finishing Bezash Hashem. Hopefully, we'll finish the 10 remembrances of, uh, that, uh, that we do every day. We're at number seven. Uh, last time we talked about uh, number six, angering God in the desert, particularly with the golden calf. So now we're going to talk about number seven, things we, list of things we have to remember and say every day. Hashem's foiling of Balak and Bilam's plot against our ancestors uh, so that we may know his righteousness. Whose righteousness? Hashem's righteousness. Hashem. So, we want to start with saying, Thank you very much for the hosts, Medina's family. May Hashem bless you with all the Barachot in the Torah. Amen. Hashem will be a house of Torah, Amen. a house of Beracha, a house of Atzlacha, success. Amen. And Bezat Hashem will see only good things coming up from your children Amen. and your grandchildren till Mashiach comes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And same for all the participants. Clearly, Toda. Amen, amen. Clearly, we must remember God's loving kindness and goodness, how He pro protects us from our enemies' plots minute by minute. Even without our awareness, Balak mm -hmm. and Bilam circled the camp of Israel, looking for a way to carry out their evil plot, while the nation of Israel did not even know the great danger that it was facing. With this remembrance in mind, we must thank Hashem who alters nature in order to save His nation, as in the desert. Thanks to uh, divine intervention, intervention. I'm sorry. Neither is Balak sorcery nor Bilam's curses and any uh, effect on Israel had any effect on Israel. Surely we must thank the Creator for everything that He does for us every moment, even when we have no idea what our enemies are planning against us. In every generation, a new enemy arises to destroy us. And the Holy One, blessed be He, saves us from their grasp. It reminds me of a song. Remember a song that we sang almost every Shabbat? Vehisham the lavoteino, Vehisham the lavoteino velano. Check the words, see what it means. Shelo echad, not only one wants to destroy us. Amad aleinu lechaloteino. And then we say, Avala kadosh baruch Hashem, Matzileinu, Matzileinu, Miyahadokesh Baruch Hu, save us from their hands. Every day. Right now, as we speak, as we speak, right now, 2020, it's protecting me. enemies around Israel plotting against Israel how to kill another Jew. For them, it's a great mitzvah. And Hashem saving many Jews in settlements around Israel. People many times don't even know that a guy bombed himself in his own lab preparing a bomb against a Jew or killed himself, or he got into a car accident, or he got sick, and, and he couldn't do it, and he got caught by the... It's so, Hashem has so many ways to save a, a Jewish as a nation, and individually, and not only the Jews, also their supporters, even non-Jews, that are supporting from the outside. The children of Israel, they will definitely be blessed. Amen. And there are many, many out there that loving the Jewish people and helping them. And all those who ever try to destroy and harm the Jewish people won't be able to execute their uh, plots, their plans. They might be able to harm a Jew here and there, but the Jewish people will never be destroyed, ever. It's a promise from God. Imagine to yourself the Jewish people in the desert about to go to the land of Israel. There are millions of people out there and two guys surrounded the camp doing some sorcery and ceremonies in order to harm the Jewish people. Black magic. Do you believe in black magic? Do you think it exists? Or just people mumble, mumble words that has no meaning? 
exist. Let me ask you this. If it's not exist, why would Hashem bother to stop two guys that are trying to say words against the Jewish people? Right. Meaning that it does exist. Remember what I told you many times that uh, we talked about the power of speech. That one can create worlds, create things with words or destroy with words. It's the most uh, effective weapon. It all starts, by the way, with words. Politicians against other politicians. And then goes down to the army and war starts. It all starts with words. Hashem created the world with words. Hashem said that and it happens. And say that and it happens. By Yomer, by Yomer, with words. This is why Hashem implement, Hashem plant in the DNA of the world the power of words. This is why Lashonara is so powerful. This is why blessing is so powerful. Saying thank you is so powerful. So with words, we can almost get everything. We can get our way to Hashem with words. We plead, we cry, we sing using words. Can I sing without instruments, without music? Yes, of course, we do that on Shabbat. So, you see how words are so powerful. And Hashem is warning Bilam. Bilam was one of seven prophets that the non-Jewish nation has. By the way, Job is one of them, and three of his, three of his friends, Eli, Faz, Hatemani, the Yemenite, um, and Tsofar, Hanamati, and he has three guys, three friends, that, you heard about Job, right? You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Job. Job, yeah. And uh, there were great Sadiqim, Bilam was almost at the level of Moses. How could Hashem give a human being, he was young, 30-something years old, such a power and holiness to be like Moses, and yet he was so down, he was so wicked. He did horrible things that I can even, what I want to say on this table, I just gave you a hint. Uh, you know, the, the, the donkey's wife asked, or asked, right? That was his wife too. If you know what I mean. And he did that, by the way, in order to bring a lot of so forces from the other side. In order to do that, to get a black magic, you have to uh, mix yourself and be involved with very horrible... Uh, things, yeah. right. You have to break a lot of Torah laws, yeah. even the seven universal laws. So in, when you do that, you bring a lot of force, and you knew how to use these forces to harm other people. So how is it possible that such great people can go against the children of God and using the power of speech, of words, against his own people? <clears throat> so do you have an answer, by the way? <coughs> if you're in such level, you know, they're saying that Job, for example, he lives at the uh, a little time was Moses. Moses wrote his book. Some say it was a little bit before. Yeah. All three friends of Job was the descendants of Abraham Avinu. They were all great Sadiqim. And eventually, at the end of the story, you can read. Uh, it's very interesting to read Job. It's not an easy book to read, but with the commentary, it makes it easier. Um, if you man voice, it's amazing. Um, eventually, Job was able to acquire back all what he lost. He was More. able to beat his friends with his with the conversation they had, and um, my question is then: How is it possible to? Such a, such a, a person like Bilam that got power from Hashem, it could be like at the level of Moshe, could sin. And how can Hashem give him such power? One of the answers I saw says that Hashem want to uh, 
say to the other nation, you know, when they come and Mashiach comes, oh, the Jews are special. They tell you why. Because you gave them someone like Moses. If you come someone like Moses, we will not see. Well, I gave you a Bilam. When the people left Egypt, and everybody heard the thunders and the noises and the earth, earthquake, they all felt. And all waters and the world split. People want to drink something. This Red Sea split. In their cup, it split also. They draw a drink and it split. They go to the lake. They, they will take a shower. It's, the water splits. Everybody amazed. They talk. What's going on? Something in the energy in the air. They ask their prophets. And the prophet says to them, Bilam was one of them, ah, don't worry. The Hebrews are living in Egypt and their God is giving them the Torah. Give them a set of laws. No, don't worry about it. Instead of telling them, whoa, it's exciting. Let's run with, from them. Let's be like them or be with them. Eh, don't worry. They lost uh, uh, the blessing of that, the, these moments. But when you have a different agenda than what God has, like Bilam. Bilam was all about the money, the salary, the honor that he gets from it. There was nothing pure there. So, if you read the Parsha of uh, Balak, you could see the whole conversation. It's all about the money. It's all about, you'll give me, I say, give me more. I, can't. I wouldn't go through the whole Parsha, but as you can see, it's hidden in the words of Bilam to the messenger, the, the, the ministers of Moab, the minister of Midian that comes to bring him. Balak was a powerful king over Moab, and he was afraid that the Jewish people just passing by his land, that's it, they're not going to go dwell in his land, going to uh, hurt him. I can understand Balak that he's afraid. Bilam, what's, what's your excuse? Balak knew that with weapon he can beat the Jewish people. He says there is a very powerful weapon, it's called curses. And I know a guy that when he curses someone, it's done. It's, it's done. So he called Bilam and is willing to pay him everything. Eventually, after setting up seven altars with so much animal to sacrifices, instead of curses, it was only blessings. And he was upset. And Bilam and Balak plans were... Uh, vanished but Bilam didn't let go before he left he gave Balak right he gave Balak an, an, an idea he said listen I couldn't curse them he wants to give him the evil eye he went to a high place to give him an eye he couldn't Hashem protected him his eye was very evil you know he, he was one eye was on, one eye was already dead you could see in one, with one eye it's what's called the evil eye only one huh? Because one eye is enough. <laughs> he only kept the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> the good one was right. So he told them, he told the Balak, listen, I couldn't curse them because I told whatever Hashem is telling me to say, I will have to follow. But I give you uh, an advice. The God of the Jews hate abomination. He like modesty. What do you mean? <laughs> said, you know, you see millions of people camping not far away from here. Open the flea market. Oh, bring, bring all the beautiful girls. Yeah. And you know how it works with flea markets. You know, make sure they'll be available for free. Give them a tryout, and their guy will do the rest. And exactly what what happens? Many Jews. Twenty-four thousand. Yeah, sin, and with the plague, with the punishment, not one, not two, 24,000 people died out of this sin. So, Hashem, in one hand, want to protect the Jewish people. But sometimes a Jew, a person, needs to be protected from himself. You know, the, there is a place for that a Jew should not go. A more modest person should not go. It's not appropriate. It's no question about it. You should not be there. 
You should be careful. There is, for example, even nowadays, people want to go to the beach. What's wrong going to the beach? Well, it depends. If it's a co-ed, it's not appropriate for you to go. Women should be in a modest way at their area, and the men their area. That's not appropriate. You know, between you and I, I don't know how, not smart, let me put it that way, a woman to let her husband or friend to go to such a place when you see other girls that can compare them to you. You're putting yourself in this, on the spot. Why are you doing that? He's looking, he's enjoying all day, and now he's looking at what you have at home. <laughs> you know, it's not so, he's, he's having second thought. <laughs> and who did that? You to yourself. Him, Why are you doing that? Gave him wings. <laughs> that was a side comment. Okay. So, we've learned here already that Hashem is protecting us, but we, we, someone needs to protect us from our, save us from ourselves. Yeah. You know, Hashem thing. can do only so much. I mean, Hashem can do. Hashem can do everything, but He wants us to take part and share in this world and said, listen, I'm going to protect you to a certain point. From now, from here, you have to do it yourself. How do we do it? How should we do it? Hashem said, I gave you a set of laws. It's called Torah. Follow my Torah. You'll be protected. And the Torah says you should not be in certain places. The Allah asked a question. There's a question in the Allah. What if the shul, for someone to walk from his house to the shul, five minutes, but these five minutes is going through some stores that there's pictures or questionable place. Let's put it that way. If you have to go around, it'll take you 30 minutes. It's so it's a waste of time to walk 30 minutes instead of five minutes. But the Allah says, go the, 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 the long way. Exactly. Stay away from such places because the evil inclinations is stronger than you. So one says, you know what? I'm going to close my eyes. I can trick it. I close my eyes and I'll do it quickly. I'm not going to spend 30 minutes on the road, five minutes, shortcut. I'm in the shul, davening, praying, learning Torah. I'm going to save 25 minutes of Torah and Kedusha and holiness. The halacha and the Talmud call them a wicked. Rasha, why? Yeah. Why wicked? Because you put yourself in danger. Yeah. You put yourself in a place that one day they'll get you. One way or another. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. You know, no comparison, but you heard about Yosef. Yosef Hashem testified that he's a tzaddik. Yosef, oh, wow. righteous. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a beautiful, handsome, handsome person. He could have any girl from Egypt, the most beautiful one. And at the place where he were, the Sarat Tabachim, Potiphar, his wife was the most beautiful at Egypt at that time. Sarah Tabachi means he was the executor. Right. He could have any girl from any nation. Egypt were the empire. So he picked one, and it was, her name was Zlicha. She was very beautiful, and she got, fell in love with Yosef, a young man. And she tried everything, <clears throat> and he was able to avoid her. One day, they have a celebration with um, idol worshiping meaning that everybody has to go and participate the whole day and then they come back at night. And she wants to take advantage. She knows that Yosef won't participate. And he was the, the CEO of the house. He was running everything. She said, today I'm going to catch him. I'm going to be alone. You have no excuses. I'm going to get him. So she's at her house. And then he comes to deal with his uh, 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 master's business, accounting and all that, whatever he did then. And then the story happens with uh, his wife that he has to run away and leave the jacket with her. And then she blames, she says, enough is enough. I can't get him, so I'm going to put him in jail. It's a very familiar story, right? And she complained that he did so and so to her. If you're such a righteous man, it's a dick, why Hashem didn't save him from her? Hashem, you've been with him all the time. Now, when he needs you, Hashem, you left him at the hands of this wicked woman. And now she blamed him that he did something with her, or tried to do something with her. And her husband 
put him in jail. He was there for 12 years. Why well, Hashem didn't help him? So I saw a commentary says that, Yosef, you're a righteous man. You're a tzaddik. But you know that everybody out there, this is, not, this is the day to take a vacation, to stay at your place. Why this day you have to come and do accounting? You're there with her. He put himself in a danger. Nonetheless, he could, and he, he, he did actually, he, um, he didn't sin, right? But just putting yourself in such a place is already a sin. He didn't act wisely. He went down. By the way, how is it possible that Potiphar, her husband, didn't kill him? Like, who's going to say anything? Who are you? Gonna, why he didn't kill him? He knew the truth. How he knew the truth? He knew his wife. He knew his wife and also tested. Because um, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give you... I'm going to be very, yeah, I'm going to be very, very gentle about it. Get whatever you get out of it. But it's the Torah we have to learn. Right. You can find the whole story in Ma'am Loez. So she, in the middle of being intimately with her husband, she said, you see what you'll be doing now? He, this is exactly what he wanted to do to me. And you see there what you see on the, in the, the sheets? That came out of him. <gasps> so, okay, he called the wizards. Take it to the lab, let's check. He knew his wife. According to science, what she did, she took from the egg, not the yolk, what do you call it? The white, white part. What do you call the white one? The not the yolk, the, huh? white. the white. Okay, she took the white. So from a distance, it looked like, you know, something like that. Right. So the rule says, if it's a real semen, right. it will melt, like butter. Right. But if it's the uh, egg white, the white of the egg, it's going to harden. Right. They checked it, and they came out to Potiphar and says, this is not a real, uh, <laughs> they checked it. Now he's in the middle of, you know, she said so-and-so. And on the other hand, I can't, I don't want to kill an innocent person. So he put him in jail. Otherwise, he would kill him. And he knew him, right. and he knew her. So in order to get away from the situation, okay. But he also did it. He had other, uh, other agendas. You know, they call him Potifer. He bought Yosef in the very beginning <laughs> in order to be with Yosef because Yosef was not there. In Egypt, one of the greatest sin, but it was very common, was, was that men goes with women. And there's no problem a man is married yeah. and he has servants and he has maidservant and he can be with all of them. This is why Egypt was such merged in, in, in such, so much tum'ah that the Jewish people has in some point to live. Otherwise, they will sunk into it. And they break all moral laws that you can ever imagine. Ever imagine. From either worshipping to being intimately with there's an animal. I don't want, it has a, it's, Anything that moves. it's a house of Kedusha. I don't want to say that. Ah, yeah, yeah. You can, sometimes you can't even understand how people can go so low with their desires. But when you let it, when you open the door to the evil inclination, you don't know how it can end. We started to see it now Many people regret where they're at, either in jail or in the grave. Now the Neshama regrets. They could prevent it if they were just being careful with, with modesty, for example, or just following the rules. You have to fight yourself. You should know that there's a creator and he sees everything, follow the rules, you'll be protected. You break the rules, it's going to bite you, it's going to hit you. And you're doing it to yourself. So the Jewish people, 40 years studying Torah, Hashem protecting them. And it, the story that we read Every day, we don't read the story, we just read that Hashem's uh, foiling of Balak and Bilam's plot against our ancestor so that we may know his righteousness. It's not just only to remind us 
a great time when our forefathers were in the desert, they were saved from these two crooks. They were great people, great people. It's to teach us that this happens every day. Every day, Hashem protects each and every one of us. Some you notice and some you don't. And I believe mostly we don't. Hashem is sending His guardian angel with all of us that watches us. The more merit you have, the more zikhuyot, the more mitzvot, the bigger protection you'll get. And if you open your eyes, you'll see it. That you didn't go at a certain time with certain people and you were saved. You didn't do did this investment or this that because your Hashem doesn't want you to lose money or to do the wrong thing and He's protecting you. But we don't appreciate it. We take it for granted. It's my wisdom. It's me being careful. If Hashem will leave you uh, the hands of the other forces, the results are, you know, you know what's going to happen to you. So it's to remind us, Hashem is there for us all the time. And we should ask ourselves, are we for Him? What do we do to thank Him? Hashem says, I don't need anything from you. Just emunah. Have fear in your heart that I'm there, I'm the creator of the world. Please follow my Torah. That's it. I don't need anything from you. You can't give me anything. Just follow the Torah, the mitzvah. That's it. Every part of these ten remembrances has deep meaning in our daily life. It's never just history. If people think, that's the commentary that says, that Ramban says, that the Bible is just a book of history, they miss the point and they're great sinners. Because there are many book of histories out there. But that's not the point of, or the value of the, the Tanakh, the Bible. Each pasuk, even the story about Avram and Eliezer, his servant, is to teach us something today, 2020. Everything is to teach us how <clears throat> to be a better person, a better Jew, a better father, mother, educator, you name it. What time is it? I'm sorry. It's already 10.03. 10.03. I always have, you know, <laughs> plans that I'm going to finish it, but I just can't. We, we, we can keep going. Okay. okay, so we're at number seven. There's not a shame. We're going to continue eight, nine, and ten soon. I could go on with the story about Bilam and Balak. If we analyze the, the parasha, maybe one day we'll do it, you'll see amazing things from the words. The wisdom that it's hidden in that story is unbelievable. Bottom line is we should appreciate and maybe after this class start to open our eyes to see things around us. There is no guarantee that one gets to his car, his car and go safely home. There's no guarantee to anybody ever. If you think that, believe me, when you sit in your car, you say, Hashem, please Don't take me home you. safely. You will start to say that. Hashem, thank you for bringing me home safe. Take things from God, of course. I have plans, I have to do this. Plans, men's. <laughs> There's no guarantee for anybody. Yeah. And when you thank Hashem, Hashem will pay you for acknowledging that He is your protector. And He'll protect you for more. Meaning, you use the power of speech to thank Hashem. And Hashem will pay you. With parnasah, with protection, from other forces. I drove today to certain places and I had from this side, 18 wheelers, and the other side, 18 wheelers. I don't know if they even notice me. And I'm speeding up to get out of these guys, and they're speeding up too. And the noise that came out of this engine, Scary. I said, Hashem, Hashem, what is this? And, uh, you know, this is, they, they can, yeah. God forbid, someone can get stuck in this, they, they can 
go. They don't even. They don't even notice that. The accordion. Accordion, you know. So Hashem, Toda Rabba, for making me safely home to my family, so I can do this shiur. And it happens to all of us every day. Believe me. Just let's open our eyes and thank Hashem for what He's doing for us. So true. On behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, please go to our website and do the mitzvah of Chesed to help our organization. And Hashem will pay you a thousand Amen. times more with Parnasa and uh, uh, health. Believe me, I'm not saying it for something, but I hear more than one people that says, when I help others, when I give donation, I see that God is helping me as well. So, Tadar Abba, Be'ezrat Hashem will meet again this week, uh, next week, same time. Be'ez Hashem in the house of the Medinas, healthy and happy. Shabbat Shalom.